Hello, Namaste. I am Susanna. Namaste, I'm Sagarka. Welcome to the S Connection. <laughs> Where we have coffee and conversation together. Um, uh, hi, Suzanne. Thanks for joining this chat. And um, so what are we talking about today? <laughs> okay, this is a new concept that we came up with, Sagorika and I. We liked our last chat so much and uh, we have different topics in mind that we want to talk about to each other. And you guys, you can also leave like in the comment section with other topics you might be interested in. Anybody who's watching this and wants us to talk about a certain topic can leave it in the suggestions as well. I would love that. So I have this topic that is um, came up. Uh, it's called ageism. And I have this really good explanation here where it is a prejudice or discrimination against people based on their age. Now, this is a kind of a prejudice that is uh, prevalent in our society without us even realizing it, I think. Um. I have because, a, I have a, uh, I have a slightly different take on this. I think, uh, hmm. I think a lot of your experience comes from your profession, and uh, you know, I think it differs uh, profession-wise. For example, ageism in something like the film industry would affect, uh, you know, as as one ages progressively. Uh, hmm. ageism would affect the older people or, the, or those presumed to be older. Whereas when it comes to a corporate atmosphere, in at least in India, typically uh, a younger person is viewed with some amount of prejudice when it comes to uh, handling higher positions. And this, this is one of those rare cases where I've seen it affect men and women both. I've seen that there is a phasing out after a certain age also in the corporate world. I have read about cases where people, uh, especially women, were also not getting ahead after a certain age because they were saying, okay, now you are too old to handle this. Yeah, this is, I don't, yeah, you're right. It is very prevalent in my industry. Right. It's very prevalent in acting. And I shared this article with uh, you yesterday as well mm -hmm. about this topic where actors who are, 28 are being told you're too old to play the love interest of right. somebody who's maybe five years older to you. Yeah? And this is just such a shocking number when you are being told you are too old at the age of 28. Uh, I, I don't even know what to say to that because I can understand that they get funny around the age of 14. What is my problem right now? And looking back, I can see that since I have come here, right from the beginning, people were trying to push me into an older age category. They always wanted me to play somebody 15, 20, 25 years older. Wow. And I was wondering why that is happening. And I was thinking maybe because they can't find foreign artists. You know, I was understanding it as such. Maybe that was the case as well. But uh, now in this day and age, I, will, I was uh, auditioning for, um, yeah, that's her story. Yeah, this is the article that you shared with me. And at 37, she is being asked to play somebody who's dating a 55-year-old man. And Maggie Gyllenhaal is one of the celebrated as a very good actor in Hollywood, at least. So it's, it's interesting. The whole list is full of uh, amazing actors. And it, it is uh, just really weird and shocking to, uh, to see these things. And... I had an audition for a part and first I got it later, I was replaced and it was supposed to be a 40 plus year old woman and they took a 24 year old actress for it later. Oh my the God. The girl who played, and the girl who played her daughter was the same age and I'm just like, why are you doing that? It, is, it was also not looking convincing. I don't begrudge anybody work. Yeah, let's be clear and honest. If anybody out there is getting a part because they're better or they fit the part more, but if you're casting somebody who's 40, 45, 50 year old character and you take a 20 year old woman, she will not have the, she will not look the part. Just putting some whitener in her hair is not going to do mm. it. It's just right. not happening because she can't uh, perform from the inside like that. So uh, I have first hand experience at this. And as mm. I shared in that article as well, like Gina Davis went through this. And I mean, there's this whole list of, of big actresses uh, Olivia Wilde, who was supposed to not be in the Wolf of Wall Street, 
because they told her she's too sophisticated or is a different translation to say you're too old to play the character. Oh. But she did it in the end because <laughs> they were insisting on it. It's, the director wanted to work with her. Interesting. And not There's more. Medicine. I think this is the one that you shared, right? All of these actors. You have Maggie Chilnell, yeah. Olivia Wilde, Gina Davis, Anne Hathaway, Jamie Danbo, Emma Thompson. I think though Emma Thompson has played a variety of roles, though. Emma. She is one of the ones like uh, I also find she gets the roles. Nicole Kidman is getting roles, amazing roles, and it is not everybody. Or Meryl Streep is getting amazing roles. Absolutely. But the writing is as such that the writing is not to the tune of like there's a youth obsession, or TV is being made for a certain amount of people, and a, a, a a huge chunk of uh, humanity is being cut out into sto in from stories. Either they're playing a stereotype or they're just there to advance the story. Like they don't have a story themselves to tell. And I find that sad because if you, if you see the story of somebody who's 50 or 55 or 60, they have interesting things to tell and you can put that into a screenplay and you bring it to people. And as we are, except India and China, I think there is more, uh, Europe is aging more mm. aged or older people in Europe than there are in anywhere else in the world. So I think there is a uh, resonance as well where people would like to see these kinds of stories with people where they can resonate. Um, I thought about this once we discussed the subject and I was thinking about how uh, the author Danielle Steele essentially writes for older people and those who have been once divorced, uh, that's her audience. So she's a very popular romance novelist, and I uh, I know that that's her genre. So uh, I also know that one of the things that happens with an influencer culture is that whatever is put on the camera. So, for example, people in India visit Pinterest, uh, where perhaps you have a larger Scandinavian or American audience, and uh, they want their bedrooms, their drawing rooms to look like the Pinterest version of it. We discuss things with regards to, oh, you know, let's bring in this plant. We'll, we'll bring in a fiddle leaf fig or we'll, we'll get a rubber plant. And it has nothing to do with what survives in, you know, what is a native plant to India? What else we can do with our houses? We'll do minimalism. We'll do a Scandinavian version of things. And, uh, oh, you know, we have our own ethnic styles and each region has so much diversity. All of that gets lost. So whatever is put in front of the camera tends to pick up speed. What is not put in front of the camera is somebody who's aged appropriately. And, you know, like you said, medals, tree bags, great roads. So if you do have a lot of people with a certain, not just within a certain age category, doing things that are presumed to belong to that age category, but just living normally not just playing mother or something just having yeah. their own yeah. stories so i think uh sri devi managed it before she passed away yeah. she made films like english for english and mom uh, yeah. yeah yeah so uh she managed some of it so these are i think it's it's a bit of a churn but as soon as you start making that trendy we might see a shift, but that depends on who has power. If it's more younger people or people who prefer younger people, then you know that's that's always going to be a drawback. It's easy to blame the audience because everybody's like, oh, that's what the audience wants, but it's never been the case. The audience that be here all the time. Uh, yeah. th this line is uh, either it is the audience wants this or the channel decides this, or yeah. you know, there's always an excuse for these kinds of stories, yeah. and then every time. Uh, something like English English becomes a hit with the older actress in the lead and everybody goes like, oh, why did this happen? You know, it's like this big surprise, you know? No, it's not a big surprise. It's a solid story. Exactly. And solid stories are working. It's not even, it's not, uh, if it's young or if it's old or if it's this or that, that's not the important thing. The important thing is how the story is being scripted and a strong story is a strong story. And if you have somebody who's maybe older, maybe the story can become stronger because you can put more backstory into the characters. Well. Yeah. True. So uh, why somebody is doing something from where they're doing it, that is all playing into it. 
Absolutely. Um, so I think uh, one of the other things is that uh, men were also cast as heroes based on how attractive they were perceived to be. And people like Irfan Khan got a pretty late break after being in the industry mm -hmm. for a long time. So you would see a lot of heroes getting multiple chances, but somebody who's a solid actor would relatively not. And that did not apply to women at all. Women were mostly, you know, young, beautiful, in the prime of their youth, acting with actors, uh, male actors much older than them. So that was definitely uh, the case. So, uh, yeah, I, I, do you see this trend changing in the industry slowly, maybe uh, with, you know, Ravina Tandon uh, doing Aranyak, and she's not really pretending to be old as such, but... She is. That's the school that didn't work for me, by the way. Oh, oh okay, okay. Ah, okay. um, oh, yes, I just you, were, you were supposed to be the... Right. Yeah. Um, so what was happening is uh, that... Um, what I wanted to add to this as well is that the actresses are... Um, is it because of the rules they're being given that the only thing that they have to be uh, is look good, look young? Yeah. And then you see actresses who are shifting towards the age of 30, 35, and then they suddenly start doing all kinds of things to their face. So you have these prevalent, like, duck lips are happening, and uh, botox is happening, and filler is happening. Uh, and I think that's most of it is out of insecurity, because we as an audience, we look at them, we say, why are you doing it? You don't need to do it. You're looking very pretty. There is no need for you to do all these things. Yeah, but I think there is a certain insecurity coming because they know they have a deadline, they have an expiry date. Mm -hmm. I think women have more an expiry date because you don't see that with men that much. Right. Um, I will. Um, um, I will say that that's kind of a social shift that needs to happen anyway. You know because. That's been the case for quite a while. As soon as uh, we have, we started having a mass market for cosmetics and an aspirational market and the population that could spend on these things, the goal has always been to sort of never have wrinkles, never have white hair, have poreless skin forever. And uh, it does prey on insecurities. That's what magazines have said for ages, for decades. And uh, I think that's still the case. So um, I guess those in the field of acting have more necessity to uh, get work done. And I think South Korea has, is, a, is a huge case study. Every actor there, you know, it's, it's a major hub for plastic surgery and K-pop is so popular now that the industry is only grown bigger now, the plastic surgery industry. So, yeah. yeah. I don't know, you asked me about will this ever reverse? And uh, I see a little tiny glimpse of um, I'm following certain YouTubers and I see some people are being tired like they watch the video of the YouTuber where he's like saying uh, the ugly face of beauty where he's showing bad TikTok trends or he's showing where people are goofing up in their Photoshop or why they're doing Photoshop uh, like Kardashians are doing it like you expect them to do it basically so but these videos are super popular Every time he's doing the these kinds of videos where you uncover stuff, because everybody started looking the same, everybody's using the same apps, everybody's using the same filters, and I think there will be a certain kind of there has to be a saturation for it as well, where you just say, okay, bus go ge mira. Yeah, I don't want to see the same kind of face 15 million times when I'm going on Instagram. I would like yeah. to see some other stuff. I would like to see some real people, you know. I want to see uh, also, uh, maybe because I have this, um, I like these YouTubers who are saying uh, makeup is not perfection because perfection doesn't exist. This is an exact quote. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to teach you how to be really good at makeup. But what you're seeing online with the filters, that is not skin. And then there's this whole new generation coming and growing up and thinking that I'm the only one who doesn't have this kind of skin because everybody is having this kind of skin online and how that is reflecting into hating others or hating yourself when you see bad skin or a pimple or a wrinkle 
yeah if you are so engrossed in this kind of lifestyle if you're so much thinking into that this is aspirational this is what i'm supposed to be and then you get a line and you get a wrinkle or a pimple that can drive you insane i think and that's dangerous Right. I, I think um, this affects the younger audiences a lot more, uh, younger uh, consumers of such content a lot more, because that's, I think, when the insecurity is very high. And by the time you're 30, 35, you've probably got your life a little more sorted. Let me just share one of the um, people sort of breaking this barrier. She's had white hair. For she's she's now she's sixty three I guess. Um, oh yeah, wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Yasmina Rossi. She is very um, nature oriented, and uh, she's a bikini model, and she's modeled for some of the biggest brands in the world. She's very active on Instagram, has her own brands, but um, she is uh, somebody who's always spoken about natural beauty she does not get work done as such she's had white hair she, since she was 30 i think her hair has been completely white so she's never colored it nothing like that so i, I think, think the more we get people like that huh the more we get people like this mm. who are standing up and are, are saying this is me and i'm full of love and i'm full of life they are like she's a model and there are more people like that uh, there's somebody i think in germany as well and mm. she is very, uh, she is fun. I think she's like 70 plus or something. And she's wearing colorful clothes and she has green hair and, you know, mohawk. And it's like, I don't care. This is me. I like to roam around like this. And if you're healthy, I think you can do whatever you like to because right. if you're not healthy, then it's a problem. Right. Um, so one thing that I've noticed is, you know, when you mention that people get obsessed with uh, the single pimple they have or the wrinkles on their skin, one of the things is that it's presumed to be healthier to not have pimples, which, you know, I understand. But the rest of the body is not necessarily reflected in the skin of the face, which is something that, you know, we keep hearing that, hey, this is... Uh, your skin reflects how you feel inside, which is true to a certain extent. But there are a lot of issues that, you know, the body might be healthy, maybe somebody's got their periods, and then a breakout is very normal. So, and one of the things I really like about being in India versus something that I see, at least, uh, you know, amongst the Americans, is that uh, even in the workplace, makeup is minimal. You'd see a maximum of people perhaps just using kajal which is very traditional or they'll use mm -hmm. lipstick and mm -hmm. in the southern part of the country lipstick is not very common mm -hmm. as you know something like what struck me yesterday was again we're discussing kantara which is something we discussed on our last chat as well but the a heroine there does not wear lipstick throughout the movie now if mm -hmm. we had films that essentially brought about a natural looking person which is more grounded you know she's dressing the way indians do she's living yeah. the way indians do then, uh, you know, we'd probably see a, a reversal, but it takes, because the songs were so beautiful in it, it got so popular that people really watched her a uh, lot and they liked her. She She's done a lot of cinema. Not everybody has to do a, an American version of Glamour. So that was, I think, that was nice. Um, I think Radhika Apte in Shore and the City also was was you know she had that look where it was not very glamorized uh rather traditional wife of the shark Kapoor. and so i can i can see that i can underline that what you were saying about makeup i see more makeup in germany i see like people doing a full face to go and work right. in the supermarket right. or in the shop or whatever like long spidery lashes and everything yes, making basically yes taking an Instagram makeup and wearing it in reality, what makes them look a little weird. So I don't know, maybe in their free time they want to take some selfies. But it is pretty much over the top, but it's also a certain age group. So I think it is like maybe the nonsense I did with myself when I was 20 plus <laughs> or 18, 19, coloring my hair or do, you know, these kinds of things. I think that that we can leave in the experimental uh, stride. Right, right, because right. the moment people are 25 or 28, or 30, they don't usually do that. But right. I have to again say that Indian skin is amazing without any enhancement. Yeah, you guys have 
usually a much better skin than we do. Yes, we are, we, we have light skin, but light skin gets wrinkles faster. Mm -hmm. Light skin is, uh, is needs a much more protection from sun because we sunburn mm -hmm. very easily. And uh, we look different. That's another thing where uh, there's a lot of uh, difference in gauging age, you know, not being able to gauge how old I am. Like my audience gauges me much younger than I am. But uh, when it comes to casting, they are casting me like very old. So it's, it's, <laughs> it's a weird in between where I don't know why and what is happening. No, so uh, amongst the Indian, I would say the urban population, if you go to the villages, I think you'll find good skin all around. It's just uh, darker good skin. When it comes to cities, though, perhaps due to the pollution or the lifestyles or something, I've noticed that the skin health deteriorates and people might be conscious about taking care of that. Despite that, despite that makeup is very minimal. At the workplace, it's not a necessity. People are quite comfortable in their skin. So it's just that the in I think Instagram has a massive hold on that same population. So everybody's but I also like one of the things that has happened as a uh, because you know we can we have a whole culture of Ayurveda and that's not been used. We've had you know, beauty has been pursued across millennia, but uh, that industry has only used it uh, mildly to advertise products in a way. But you see the Korean beauty industry, and I feel yeah. like that could have very well been us had we dared and now it's happening you have like brands popping up everywhere like instagram ads influencers promoting new ones you have so many one wannabe aestheticians and you know those are things that you don't see as much and i think we're extremely influenced by american culture as well due to that but at least you know it's created an industry that that you know has been long over to you uh, i saw forest essentials which is a brand i like they're mild and they are very ayurvedic they're made in india they're made in haridwar and they recently had a model uh, they um, found in Tharawi slums Malisha, yeah, Karwa. They've opened up a branch in Covent Garden. I had a friend who came from uh, London and she bought a bunch of stuff only to go back to London and find that there's a store there. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. she might have gotten it a little cheaper. Yeah, she did. She did. Like Harvey, but, for example, is extremely expensive in Germany. And when I'm bringing it from here, then it is really like affordable and a really good care. But then it's that's the, the tax yeah. and the shipping and everything that yeah. automatically yeah. adds to it. Right. But uh, being comfortable in your skin, just to come back to that ageism thing, being comfortable in your skin at any given age, I feel like a lot of women are feeling more comfortable the older they get. Like yeah. in your 20s, you're usually much more... Insecure. Um, insecure and I look at pictures of myself back then I was thinking what was I thinking you know what was I Trying thinking that hard, we look yeah. Yeah, we're, we're much harsher on ourselves yeah. but at the same time maybe at that time I was not there was no social media at that time yeah so when I was at that age but what I see now is that I have a very positive Instagram, but I see other women being attacked online when they're putting a picture up without makeup or if they're putting a picture up that is just pure and natural and smiling and everything. The comments they're getting under oh, it, yes. uh, and the biggest hitting abuse you can throw at a female is I think you look old. Oh, okay. Um, I, I think in general, so I, in fact, responded to a Twitter comment yesterday. I, I was very happy to see that men on my timeline responded positively to me about that. It didn't have to do with ageism, but in general, social media algorithms promote misogyny. I was, I, I try to surround myself with mostly knowledge based, uh, in, you know, tweets, but then now they just push things at you, right? Even if you're not following them, these things come on your timeline. There's just a random woman with her picture and she's smiling. Young girl. Okay. Why does she even exist? Why do so many people like her? Because she's pretty. Aesthetics has something to do with... Somebody posts a picture of some, themselves traveling. 
why you should try now the same thing that works on instagram is abused on twitter or you know like and on instagram i think that ageism factor is a lot like oh you look so old or you look so whatever i think that's more on instagram and here you have you know honestly that a racist slurs are used for women indian women they call them pajitas so the thing is these are indian men also doing it most of them are indian men doing it uh, against whom you know they're comfortable with the racist slur being used against indians so you can imagine their um um uh, allegiances lie more towards being the american reddit cool edge lords rather than just being kind so i think that that being comfortable in our skin is a function is probably a function of age as well a lot of these are younger people but then social media might just take it to that level where age does not matter and you have people just doing that all day regardless of age or something thankfully i i i again keep a positive you know i have yeah, positive my skin is usually also positive sometimes when somebody uh, tweets something uh i try to engage and ask why and when i get a barrage of tweets as an answer then i just sh shut the conversation and when you don't get an answer from me guys then you have been muted so what <laughs> yeah. is a nice uh, function by the way because they don't know and they can just keep right. on talking to you and you don't answer now i feel i keep on i had this uh, i said this before but not in our conversations uh, about uh, social media gives an ability to people to say something that they wouldn't have had otherwise in person absolutely at, at all just imagine you're like this 24 25 year old guy who has a phone and then he can go on social media and he can suddenly write whatever he feels like because he doesn't have any um there is no safeguard there is no accountability you can accountability yeah and he can write whatever he wants to because he wants to be heard what i feel mm. like a lot of people just want to be heard or they are sad and in pain and they want you to be the same way so that's why a lot of these weird comments are happening in my opinion you can even uh, you know create that pain without having actually gone through anything uh, today's world functions on a lot of trauma that is not tangible you can just assume that you've been through trauma and then use that trauma to hate upon other people so that's definitely a thing and um to that extent i think uh some of it might be relegated to social media but in real life when it comes to uh um ageism um where you know uh, it is a problem especially in oops you were gone for a second yeah i so, so um uh i'll just edit this part out so yeah, yeah. when it comes to ageism um it just seems like um as long as people who value experience and value good craft good say acting good thing, if they are in control if they have control of production and distribution i think things can change a lot but i'm not sure that bollywood is <laughs> really the yeah. place that will thrive it because it thrives on this sort of that's sense. the problem the whole problem is that um, when i came to this country it was in the hands of directors and production houses to cast whoever they wanted to now they can't do it anymore because it's all in the hands of channels so right. what's happening the hmm. audience requirement has changed right so that might even force casting uh, people to uh make that change because audience is kind of story i just see many like uh, small example like there are uh, young actors who are joining the industry at the age of 20 they get their big break they're doing a show the show is running well for one and a half two years and then they have this idea let's do a time leap so the same people who have been playing the 22 year old lead character of a show with romanticism and everything they are being asked to jump 15 20 years into the future and then they get children who are their own age so every actor has to understand am i doing this just to am i doing this just to get my kitchen running and 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 just live my life or do i try to jump out and try to become the hero or hero of another show what is very rare you see a lot of people they get one hit show and then it's over it's not 
it's not common. I, some can make the jump, like Muni Roy could make the jump. Yeah, uh, she could jump from TV to movies, right. but not everybody is able to do this kind of a jump. Mm -hmm. So the question is, if this is a requirement of the show and they're taking the same actors, fine. But then getting somebody from outside, I mean, here it makes sense because you want the same faces. What I'm trying to say is if at that mm -hmm. age you have to just decide what you want to do, but it makes sense because you, you are the face of the show and the show will grow with you. So 20 years down the line, that jump is there. I did that in Casorti and it was nice. It was not a problem because you are in your character. There's a ground. Mm -hmm. You're going somewhere in the story. But if you're coming in and you're being asked to suddenly play somebody in the show and you're 24 and they're asking you to play 50, I think that is hard for the actor and that is hard also to portray it like that. Why not take an actor who's 50? Because you take 24 year old to play 40, 45, then you take a 35 year old to play 60 and then every actor who's above 40 is out of work and can Absolutely. retire. Yes. So, and that is not, I don't understand why that is happening here. It is very strong in the TV industry, very strong. Right. Right. Um, for the viewers, I would request you to go and watch our last chat as well, uh, where, you know, Suzanne was talking about, and this is something that was very new to me at the time, that um, the casting of actors is kind of out of the hands of the directors, and uh, it's very difficult, and OTT has played into this a lot. So do go and check out that uh, video as well. And if you enjoy this one, if you like conversations like this, um, just simple but real, then do leave a comment, do just hit the like button because it really helps the channels. Uh, this conversation will be on both of our channels. So um, we hope to do this more regularly and just have these conversations um, for both of our audiences. Um, it, it's going to be on a lighter note for a lot of my audiences because these are typically, uh, it's apolitical, it's um, irreligious, it's just the regular life gossip. But yeah, um, to back to the subject, um, um, with, with, you know, say more creative freedom, um, via Instagram or YouTube, and I've seen some um, careers come up through there. And someone like, say, Ayushraddha, uh, who's made a brand for herself. Um, she's an actor and she just does very Indian comedy. Uh, and she's not really a typical stand-up comedian, right? She's just uh, somebody who's uh, on social media. So somebody like that, if she, she's doing a lot of skits where she's playing different characters, if that becomes the norm, and I've seen a lot of Canadian, a lot of American, especially women taking up that space. There's some who I actually like very much. And um, uh, I'll, I'll link one of the Instagrams below where uh, there's this actor talking about Nepo kids in Hollywood. And she talks about how much work they get done. It's, it's a very funny skit about how they're pretending to be normal, but essentially since the age of 13, they've had work done. They've got their noses fixed. They've got their skin redone, Botox, all of that. And that's that's their normal way of life. But she puts it in a funny manner, and I'll link it down below. But yeah, there's oh, a lot of humor. Humor is always the one uh, great weapon that you have for any uh, social situation. Yeah, anywhere where you want to um, take something on, mm -hmm. you, you do it with a certain kind of humor. I mean, Sham Sharma is doing a tremendous yeah. job because the yeah. way he is taking things and grilling them, and then that he makes it in short skits. And then if you have Ajit Bharti, who's doing it on another level, like where every tenth word, I don't even know what it means. So <laughs> I was still watching him and still getting the gist. <laughs> but I wanted to just say, uh, anytime you take humor and use it in such a way, I think it is, it's working very well. Right. right. It's something that works well. So do you think this could have been a skit on ageism that would have done well? <laughs> oh. That, that's such a huge topic. I mean, I have more here on my phone where it is like uh, you can have something called benevolent ageism 
what means it's patronizing beliefs towards people based on their age. Like when you when you get to know, you see somebody who's maybe 60, 65, you automatically think that person won't be able to use the smartphone, that person will not be able to walk down the street, that person will not be able to travel alone or dance to a song, you know, that kind of um, belief system. And uh, on the other hand, that is from the outside. And some people, I got shocked. I have a friend who suddenly said, I'm 40 now and my life is over. Indian, Indian guy. He said, nah, mera abhi ho gaya. I said, you're 40, you're just starting. You know, it's like, what What are you talking about? Um, I have come across people, I don't know, in, in this environment, I've been living here now since 2005, and I've come across people who have basically, they say, okay, my kids are now grown up, and I've done my job, and now I'm just like waiting to uh, die. die or something like this. And uh, that that is... Uh, my dad is 80 and my mom is 73 and today they're going to go on a three week journey by car driving all over Germany and visiting friends yeah and that is the kind of thing where from the outside you would say these guys are not capable of doing this anymore if you just look at the numbers but they are doing it they're living that kind of life so um Internal, I, external agent. I was actually agent. writing about this and I'm not sure that it has to do as much with age as with experience. Uh, for a lot of people of that age group, I think there's a few milestone experiences that are counted as being valuable to society. You get married, you become a breadwinner, you, you have children and they grow up and you have taken care of them until they've gone and you know they are independent that's a cycle and these are the most basic things now to have our life reduced to the absolute bare bones basic and then to mm. have no purpose outside of it i think it's a matter of purposelessness and you will not believe suzanne i've seen younger people feel like that because the you know what they call black pills these days on social media there's a uh i think you've frozen this yeah so um they call this black belt because you know you've got so much secondhand information about things from the internet that you mm -hmm. assume you know too much without having any experience of whatever you think you know and so you you've already formed your opinions like really helping you know giving out ha handing out charity to my housemaid will not really help her in any way she's still going to get beaten at home Yes, but you haven't even tried. You haven't tried opening a bank account for her. You haven't tried having a purpose in life typically outside of oneself, outside of seeing how I have fun, outside of a hedonistic. And this is mm -hmm. less um, uncommon in community-oriented places, say the village. You know, if somebody has an issue, if, if it's a tight-knit community, there are disadvantages, of course, like, you know, you don't when you're 15 or 16 you don't want everybody in your window seeing whose hand you're holding and who you're going out with that's that's definitely a, a disadvantage but uh when you're older you would appreciate having somebody from family somebody you trust a friend to take care of your children rather than an outside person that you pay only right yeah. the child forms a stronger bond they learn languages they learn um um, discipline they learn you know people feel like they have more of a right also to that child but in general a community has more of a sense of purpose rather than people who live in more artificial synthetic communities or building or gated communities not genuinely community people do very few things together they're not involved people go to these places because you know there's a little bit of a distrust and uh you know while india is a high trust society in general and mumbai was found to be one of the was the second most honest city in the world after lisbon i think um yeah people there was a social experiment where americans i guess they dropped their wallets on the street or somebody dropped their wallets and mumbai was found to have returned the wallet many times across many places i've seen that happen like to me so, happened uh, to me happened to you turn a couple of times yeah, it happened to uh, everybody. I think yeah. uh, these kinds of things happen. I, the, the opposite is rare. 
Most um, of the time, ninety-nine percent of the times, it is a positive experience. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it is a high trust society. However, because of a uh, rising number of urban centers, which are very disconnected from its less urban roots, I'm not sure I should be using urban in a negative sense. I'm not. It just should signify better infrastructure. But what it's doing is that. Because work is only available in urban centers, work is not available equitably where people can stay connected with family. Like I have to go mm -hmm. home to a different city to be with my parents. And yeah. that requires me to take leaves which will rarely be approved of unless I were working from home. And uh, that gives it, I think Zoho has done this well. They have a plan where, you know, they're opening up workspaces. That, so in that case, you tend to see more real life. You're, you're more connected and you're not thinking you're less insecure and these issues where, you, you know, um, thinking about, because everybody's problem is your problem. So you're not lacking for purpose in that sense. You know, somebody's having, you know, somebody else's father is unwell. You participate in that. Somebody yeah, yeah, is yeah. getting married. You go and actually contribute, not just monetarily, but you're there to do, you know, to help with the catering. To well, You have gurudwaras and temples where you do seva. So seva mm -hmm. as an aspect of everyday life is no longer there. That creates a sense of purposelessness and that makes people feel older and more experienced than they are. So oh, that's, yeah. that's a good point. This is like an interesting point you're making there. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. If we have something to look forward to, something outside of ourselves to participate in, become contributors rather than consumers of society and societal trends, I think that's very helpful and that's kind of disappeared in today at least in, in you know cities. Hmm. I'm still digesting what you were just saying because this yeah. is an interesting video. Like, my mom never lacks any uh, inspiration for purpose. She keeps on just like, um, there's always a family where she right. can connect with. Always children who want a little pampering because she loves kids like anything. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, Animals play a big part in my parents' house. Nice. Like they, my dad is, it's not his dog, but he takes the dog for a walk every day. So that's his purpose. And then they have a cat that they spoil rotten. Oh. It's like a baby in the house. So that, that gave them also a purpose, you know, something that makes you get up in the morning. I can see how difficult that is. Purposelessness is very difficult. Like if you, you come as an actor, you come through these phases where you don't get work. And that can be like uh, from a week to like months and years. Mm -hmm. And then keeping a certain kind of uh, routine and having a purpose. Because why should you get up? There's nowhere to go. Why should right. you go for anything? Because there's nowhere to go. Who do you meet? Mm -hmm. What do you do? You just sit around, wait for the phone to ring. So somebody calls you for work. So the purposeness is there. But it is a good point when you're connecting that together with age. When the phone stops ringing and nobody calls you for any work, then of course you will think Abi Meravogia because if nobody mm -hmm. calls me, then I don't have a purpose and you feel older. I don't know if you meant it. I, I, I still can't believe because the guy is a bodybuilder as well, besides being a doctor. And, and he said, Abi Meravogia, I said, You're 40, you look 10 years younger. I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah. So. Uh, it's the feeling. I think, I think, I think um, it's. What used to happen was, especially before the era of the internet, right? We used mm -hmm. to getting our experiences secondhand now, uh, third hand now, uh, because earlier, you know, you'd wake up because you had to wake up. It was a, it was just part of that discipline of existence. Like yeah. nobody needs to. There's no externalized purpose. Now we have to create those for ourselves. Like yeah. we had to chat after my night shift. If we didn't have to chat, I might have lain in and, you know, not been awake. I get that sense of purposelessness a lot when living alone these days. Because see, typically I have deadlines for some things I do at work. I have deadlines mm -hmm. for articles that I need to write, all of those things. But they're not really hard deadlines, so I can procrastinate. So maybe I'm just consuming too much. I'm binge watching, binge eating. 
I feel much older than I should just inside because unless there's an external unless there's an external push that okay let me you know I have an appointment here or I have to do I promise to be here today unless that happens and we don't need to spend money like I said the sense of contribution the sense of seva has to come from inside us that let me go to the ashram let me meet some older people let me meet some senior citizens I have booked myself up for this that's mm. lacking that was not lacking previously like that's where you found some solace and there's a great way to connect also with people um, whether it's the same age whether it's different age groups there's so much to take from different age groups right from the younger ones you have more enthusiasm from the older ones you certainly have more wisdom and different ways of looking at the world and yeah i i definitely think that um maybe that externalized ageism affects a certain group but uh it's very different between the countries if I, at, if i look at germany and if i look at india india is having this a little bit more that they think of themselves older than they actually are we are so, we know more and that's not a good thing information does not equate experience at all and i so do you think, think is, you, you think you are stimulating yeah you think overstimulation and having too much yes, access mental, to too mental mental overstimulation is not good and at the same time no purpose no purpose because action action trumps uh overthinking any day um i know as a society you know we haven't had the resources to be very risk friendly so we are technically very risk averse as a society it helps our economy but uh, it does not create entrepreneurship the way we need it to it does not create people willing to take risks unless you know hey okay you've been laid off can you start it? and you'll see this i think some um I remember there's this um, influence Instagram influencer called Isha Bora. There are quite a few YouTube influencers who come from villages, who were laid off from their jobs. That's when they started showing village cooking, and they oh. made huge channels. Right now, you start I'm with following, I'm following this. Uh, I think it's called Punam Art Academy, where uh -huh. she's drawing and she's doing right. doing these three D drawings and everything, and she's having a. She just got this. Uh, youtube car you know what you're getting oh, when you have wow, some silver, yeah, right. silver one silver one mm -hmm. so uh, i find this very encouraging that is the one plus side of uh, social media yeah. where you feel like Absolutely. and since th these people didn't sit down and say i'm too old to do this right no there's there's an uh there's a male model i think um from the southern part of the country i think or or maybe maybe from mumbai i'm not sure uh but he started his modeling career after 55 or something uh you know just uh retired life didn't have much and just went in there wore these eccentric eccentric clothes that looks really it looks good and yeah. uh, he made a whole career for himself now 15 years in the industry so uh and anyone i think with any amount of grooming or something if you're in front of the camera whatever the age what i think it just um uh, you know suzanne i think the more our generation grows older perhaps we'll see more characters reflecting us because you know that's how that's what we'll relate to for a long time we were fed now we have slightly more control i think creatives have a little more control as long as you're not hiring people just out of college i think if you're hiring people with experience then you might have some relatable that, that's experience. the thing that's the thing that there is a certain mindset still you see the uh, formal like uh, formula while well, once bollywood movies are being done and uh, certain kinds of formula tv shows are being done where it's the same kind of uh, pattern that is being followed you know and there are oops, can be good success and can be okay success but the moment you're trying to do something a little bit out of the box a little bit different i think that hits a different nerve you know they're trying to play too safe sometimes yeah by yeah. not including certain age groups not not including certain uh, characteristics of it a stereotype as well see everybody like uh, the stars a little uh, poker and the belly is all a little bit over dramatic and the, <laughs> you you have these kinds of uh, uh stereotypes that is still very much there on tv and that's why ott platforms they are probably the future where you can have a different kind of content 
and maybe even some stories where the story is there and the story is important not what the person looks like or what the person is what the age is but the story is important and a good actor I wish they were less rare though I wish they were less rare. I mean, like I, I, I think OTT, but also YouTube and Instagram are good mediums of creative control. Like, for example, if you were to do skits on Instagram, uh, you'd, you'd probably see a very high chance of success. But the thing is, the collab, you don't have that much control. Like, first you have to make money, you have to get lots of sponsors. Then you might think of hiring people and upping your game and having a studio and things like that. It's a long mm -hmm. process. And people oh, with yeah. that existent creative control are not doing what is necessary. And this is an industry that apparently prides itself on diversity, at least internationally. But, you know, we just saw a list of international actors who said that that was not the case when it comes to age, certainly. Um, so yeah. So yeah. Are we all talked out? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, I think I think it's lasted quite a while. So we've been through ageism, a lack of purpose. We've been through um, um, different industries and the job creations due to ageism as well. So hopefully that is more um, holistic so if you guys liked anything about this do drop us a comment we'll be very grateful yeah. both of our audiences so yeah, yeah. we always like comments and especially this is our first one and if you have an idea what we should talk about next you can also leave that in the comment section and uh, let's try to keep this chat that we are doing more on the lighter or interesting note because we both are having our own channels uh, like you're doing yeah. your um, historic geopolitical chats yeah. and I'm doing interviews with interesting people with all kinds of different topics. Absolutely. But we like this a lot. I hope yeah. we get the views so we can do this again. <laughs> all right, guys, give us the views, share the word so we can do this again. Yay. Uh, yes, thanks so much, Suzanne. Uh, lovely chatting as always. And yes, to yes. next week. Yeah, hopefully next week. All depends on the viewers. All right. Take care. Bye. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. If you like Sagorica, please visit her on her channel, A Questioning Mind. It is linked in the caption. If you want more videos like this, please give this like a super thumbs up and leave a comment, especially if you have a topic in mind. Okay, see you next time.